we do have the Murray brothers, which is always a delight. We've got Andy Murray, who'll be in uh, the singles. He's taking on a fellow Brit in Ryan Peniston. His brother, Jamie, who's won seven Grand Slams during his career, uh, will be in doubles action. And Jamie joins us now. Jamie, good morning. How are you? Jamie? Good, thank you. How's it doing? Very well, thank you. Is this like a, a bit like Christmas Eve for you? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. It's exciting times for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wimbledon, I think, is... Um, well, certainly for British players, I'm sure it's the, the tournament they look forward to, to most. But, um, yeah, I think the majority of the players, they love they love coming to Wimbledon and mm. for, you know, all that it um, entails. And, you know, last few days kind of being at the, at the courts, kind of practising, seeing everything, you know, all the kind of finishing touches final touches getting put on the mm. on the grounds and everything and um you know players in their last minute preparation seeing players getting to practice a bit on the championship courts and they're all whites and stuff and uh yeah it's uh it's exciting yeah looking forward for it to, to kick off tomorrow jamie it seems so common now that so many tennis players are carrying injuries or had quite severe injuries of the demands on the modern day tennis player from Nadal for your brother Andy and many many others it feels like injuries are, are just escalated in is, is that anything new to you or because or is it just me thinking this is just a coincidence in timing of so many players being out um I mean maybe a bit of both I think um you know obviously Andy's kind of hip stuff's been well documented Rafa's you know, certainly the last few years is, has not really competed a full, or, well, on a full schedule at all mm. because of, you know, foot and, and knee issues. And, you know, he's undergone operations now as well. Um, I think, you know, over the years, the game's got more and more physical. And, you know, we've seen these epic matches that these guys have, have played so often in, in these Grand Slam events. And, you know, they're putting their, their bodies to the limits. And I guess at, at some point, you know, body's kind of saying, no, no, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, that is the nature of the sport. And also like it's, it's unrelenting the calendar. I mean, we start the first week of January and basically go all the way through till November. There's not really uh, a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of breaks in the, in the schedule. So it's, it's, it's pretty uh, permanent. Yeah. One player who has spoken about not seeing retirement on the cards anytime soon is, is Novak Djokovic, seen as the favourite to win this, as I mentioned, to, to what would equal Roger Federer's men's record of eight Wimbledon titles. It would also see him record, uh, sorry, equal uh, the amount of major victories with regards to levelling up with Margaret Court, who's won 24 majors as well. Is, is he very much the man to beat when it comes to the men's draw? Yeah, I think so for all the reasons you just said there. Um his I'm sure his motivation will be sky high to to win an eighth Wimbledon, to equal Federer's record, to get a twenty fourth Grand Slam, to equal Margaret Court's tally, to give him more space between the, the other guys in the in the goat chat and um yeah, I mean he's proven over the last how many years how how good he is on grass and yeah for me he starts as as a pretty strong favorite to uh to lift the title again mm. and jamie you uh, andy was playing yesterday against Djokovic in a warm-up to wimbledon um in good nick i mean far better than he's been in uh, recent years um maybe <laughs> I, <hope so>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean look he won a couple of the challenger titles at the start of the, the grass court scene just a few weeks ago in Surbiton and Nottingham. So I think, um, you know, that gave him some confidence. I think um, Queen's was a disappointment for him, obviously, but you saw how well Diminar played mm -hmm. across the rest of the week and in, in getting to the final. I think um, he, he's obviously coming in unseeded. So I think the draw was was pretty kind to him, to be honest, because, you know, he could have drawn anyone in the the first round. I think um, to have sits to pass in the, in the second round is potentially good for him based on his kind of grass court record recently as well. So I think all in all, he's probably quite satisfied with his, with his draw, but you know, at the end of the day, you've got to get out there and, and perform. And, you know, he is one of the best grass court players out there, even 
even still today and I think he'll he'll believe that you know he has the game to, to go a long way here mm. well just stay with us Jamie because let's hear from your brother Andy because he was talking to the media yesterday and he is super positive about his chances at Wimbledon this year I do believe I'm one of the best grass court players in the world and I'm physically feeling really good and I've prepared well um, so there's no reason why why I can't have a good tournament that was just a little snippet, but echoing what you were saying there, Jamie, then about being one of the the best players on, on grass. Um, and of course, it's what, 10 years since he won that first Wimbledon title, becoming the first British man to win it for 77 years. When you think back to that moment, what was that like for you as a family, just seeing what, what he achieved? Yeah, it was, well, yeah, I mean, for me personally, I'm sure for him was like, a was just a relief like mm-hmm. that he that he'd finally finally done it and you know doesn't have to get asked the question you know when you're going to win Wimbledon or or whatever anymore I mean I was I wasn't at the final I was playing a tournament in Stuttgart the following week so I had to travel that uh that weekend so I was I was watching it on um on my laptop on you know, it was 10 years ago so it wasn't like the streaming was particularly oh those days so um you know I didn't really get the full experience but when people ask me like if I'd if I was, you know, regret missing it. Like I don't regret missing it at all because I was just happy that he that he'd won. And you know, he was playing Novak. Like it was such a fifty fifty match. Like it could easily have been here, been there, and it and it didn't work out for him. So I was just, I was just glad he got to uh, he got over the line and um, you know could say he's a Wimbledon champion. Yeah. And Jamie, you're playing the men's doubles and the mixed doubles this year. Yeah, yeah, playing with uh, Mike Venus and Taylor Townsend. So doubles kicks off on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Not sure which which day yet we'll we'll play, but uh, yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into that. And what about your chances then of victory? Um, <laughs> You're not giving much away here, are come you? On, Jamie, you can blame the uh, other one. You can blame the other half. You can say they're not <laughs> as good. Go, I'm yeah. used to. <laughs> and doesn't have that excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Always my partner's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it'd be fantastic, I'm sure. Um, we didn't even touch on the women's side of things. Um, it, would you say that's a little bit more open as to who could win that? I think so, yeah. I mean, I think that has kind of been proven over... I think it's been a different winner the last like five or five or six years. Um, Ryba Keen obviously won last year and she's kind of maintained that form, I think, through the, through the, 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 the following year. Um, Swia takes obviously very strong, has been very dominant on on other surfaces. I'm not sure if grass would be her favourite surface. I think that's more for Rybakina with like big serving, big ground strokes, um, and you know she seems very calm and kind of composed and stuff, which I think you you need getting into the later stages of those tournaments. So she would kind of be my my pick watching the watching the women's draw and, you know, hopefully the, the British girls have been doing really well the last, uh, the last few weeks. I think um, three or four of them uh, winning matches every week, which is great. Katie Bolter won her first title in, in Nottingham. She beat Jodie Burridge in the, in the final. I think it was the first time in like 50 years there'd been a, a British woman winning a main, main level tour event. So um, hopefully those girls can get a good run going and, you know, give the British crowd a lot to, what to cheer about. Mm. Can I just ask you, what represents, do you think, success for, for Britain at this year's Wimbledon? I think, um, I mean, I think people winning matches, I don't, um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily about someone necessarily winning the tournament, but, mm-hmm. you know, having a lot of players in the draw, a lot of players competing well, getting through rounds and stuff. And, you know, I think like, the British fans that go to Wimbledon, they want to watch British players. Of course, they want to watch the stars, but they want to follow the British players. And I think um, when when the guys and girls are, are doing well, winning matches and stuff, like it's a totally different atmosphere around the, the event, I think. Yeah. Mm. And and the juniors as well, you know, watching the juniors play. Well, it's all different get, levels. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's you know, seeing where tennis is in Britain. Yeah. 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 Very much so. Well, Jamie, we wish you the best of luck for Wimbledon. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Cheers. Um, and enjoy Christmas Eve. That's what I think. That's what it is, surely. (laughs) Lots to look forward to then. We'll keep you regularly updated on what happens out at uh, Wimbledon, of course.